Welcome everyone to Living Wisely, Living Well. My name is Naya Swami Dharmini and this is Naya Swami Dharmarajan. And uh, let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Friend, Beloved God, Great Saints of Kriya Yoga, Great Saints of Kriya Yoga, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Baba Ji Krishna, Baba Ji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar, and Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, We humbly bow before you all. We humbly bow before you all. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, dear Yogananda Ji, dear Yogananda Ji. Guide, us today, guide us today as we learn discernment, as we learn discernment in, our energy and magnetism. in our energy and magnetism. Help us to win the yogic battle, Help us to win the yogic battle. Keeping, the energy uprising. keeping the energy uprising. To the point between the eyebrows. To the point between the eyebrows. We long to be with you. We long to be with you. Take us home to thee. Take us home to thee. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So for today's Living Wisely Living Well, I'll read what it says. The vibratory interchange between the sexes generates a strong magnetism. Maintain, therefore, a discreet mental distance from and minimize your contact with those of the other sex whose consciousness is sensual or worldly. As much as possible, avoid contact of the eyes or hands. A hand clasp creates two horseshoe magnets, the one upward uniting the upper bodies and the other downward uniting the lower. With such people, take care to be centered in the self. You know, ideally, the message of this is about us being aware of our energy at all times. And that's what we long to do as yogis, that's what we strive to do, is to just be aware of ourselves, of our surroundings, of the <coughs> flow of energy in our spine, and what is the biggest challenge for the yogi is to keep the energy flowing up the spine. And being around people of magnetism who are more of the sensual or more, more of the worldly uh, presents a challenge to us. And uh, Master talked about how magnetism uh, really is about well, whoever wins the magnetism gain, game, it's whoever has the strongest magnetism. So if we are around someone with very strong worldly or sensual energy and our magnetism is less, we're going to be drawn into their magnetism. And so the, the awareness is have more energy to be able to stay in our own spines. That's really the bottom line of anything for a yogi. Now this brings up the thought of relationships in general between people of the opposite sexes and what is actually going on there and what is appropriate for yogis and for devotees at Ananda. And um, certainly if someone is single and they, you know, tend to have a flirtation or something like that with another person who is single, sometimes it, it can't be helped. But basing a relationship just on that type of energy doesn't provide the glue for a long-term relationship. When people relate to each other in the, a more sensual way, flirtations, touching, that type of stuff, when that happens, a magnetism is created between the two people. And ultimately, if they spend time together, they might find themselves inevitably wanting to just be together. And so, um, as yogis, single, uh, we want to be aware of who we are relating to. Um, again, you don't want to just be with someone where there's attraction. You want to be with someone you can be a good friend with in order to, to really draw a mate for life. You want to be with your best friend. You want to find someone 
where you can have the glue of being the best friend. And, and if you have the karma for it, it's a very wonderful thing to spend your life with your spiritual partner. It doesn't happen for everyone, and that's when things get a little sticky in other circumstances. So sometimes um, we'll have people come here who are married, who are very spiritual, but their spouses are not spiritual. And that's a type of karma that people just have to work through. Um, but, but what we don't like is when uh, someone who's married might become emotionally involved with someone who's not married. That's not what Ananda's environment is for. The reason for that, I think it's common sometimes in some situations for this to happen because someone's unhappy, they might have been matched with someone and it didn't quite work out and so they might look outside the marriage for that type of thing. But in actuality, when we are in a relationship, when we are in a marriage, we've made a vow to be with that person. And very often it can turn around if the partners know and commit to it in a way. Other, while a relationship is happening, it is in process. It's not ended. And so you don't want to start, if you're single and you meet another married person, or if you're married and you're looking outside, don't try to uh, create some kind of a connection with that other person. It's not dharmic. Neither of your relationships are completed in some way. And so we don't want to have that karma on us. So th that's just one thing. And, and what will happen is when two, a man and a woman spend time together, especially sharing feelings about things, maybe perhaps about how things aren't working out for them as they like, a magnetism is created. And that's just what naturally happens between men and women. Now you notice when you come to Ananda, we don't separate the men and the women. We rely on people to just um, use uh, whatever inner discrimination they have to do that. We don't have set rules about that. And certainly, we can be friends with people. But again, as yogis, we're keeping the energy up. Another relevant question about this, about magnetism is, where am I getting my energy from? And you know when you've had kind of a more uh, sensual uh, connection with someone is when you might feel a thrill. I remember the first time I heard that an Acharya was giving a, topic on, a, a talk on this very topic and said a key to something that wasn't quite the way it should be on a yogic level is that there's a slight thrill or elation after the interaction. And so that's a clue that perhaps something was being related to in a different chakra rather than just from the heart. So we can be aware of that type of thing, about how our energy is, um, about how uh, we relate to others. When we get a thrill or an elation, what we've done is we've taken energy from that person. And perhaps they've taken energy from us. It's not coming from a, a higher state of where the energy is being taken from. And so where should our energy come from? Our energy should come from God. The more we meditate, the more that energy animates us, the more that energy comes into the body, just as Yoganandaji talks about. That energy comes into the medulla, and it comes through the body. That energy comes from God. It is self-generated from the soul. And so we, we want to aim towards that. If you are single and you are looking for someone, of course you're going to have that um, other, that attraction energy happen. Just make sure it's with a friend. So uh, this magnetism that happens between men and women, just be very aware of it. It doesn't mean suddenly everyone is like an electrical shock when you're near them and you know, that brahmacharyas, nice swamis, they tend to not be as strongly uh, um, connected to the other sex necessarily. Although as leaders for Dharmarajan and I, it's really our role to be um, interacting with everyone and not, you know, men for him and women for me. That's not the way it happens. But 
It, the brahmacharya, though, it's important that, for instance, single women stay away from bra brahmacharya men and single men stay away from brahmacharya women. It's just something that happens at Ananda as well for the sake of magnetism. Uh, because, again, you've got a man and a woman in a room. The magnetism will be created because the, we've got the poles in opposite directions. It's just a magnetism that happens. So just be aware of that. You might notice it in your work relationships. You might notice it at you know, gatherings with a bunch of people. Just something to be aware of. And notice also what direction does my energy go in after that kind of interaction. So it's kind of a touchy topic, isn't it? It's not something we talk about at Sunday Satsang very much. And yet, Swami brought this up. I'm, of course, picking it up by the thread of relationships, but it's something to contemplate, something to uh, think about. It's something that happens to us in life and uh, good to keep in mind. We um, have, as you might have heard during the prayer, a number of friends who are joining us here in the room. And uh, the reason is, is that we're having a class starting this evening um, on Akash, which is Swamiji's course, Ancient Keys to Attaining Success and Happiness. And uh, we are once again double booked. Actually, the past few webinars you've seen, if you've watched these recordings, you've heard us talk about, and there's also a class happening at the same time. You might wonder, you know, uh, is there, are we ever not giving classes? Um, but the thing is, it's just that the, this is the way the schedule works, both for the classes and the webinar. And for years, we resisted doing these webinars because of the schedule conflict. And then finally, we gave in. And so we're very glad to be with you on the broadcast and to be with you all here. But the thing is that it forces us to sort of have to address, in this case, uh, two subjects. And so we saw the very important topic of magnetism between men and women that Swamiji wrote about and which Dharmini was just addressing. And it's very important. It's crucial. And what's funny is it often is dismissed. Uh, Swamiji, when he was with Master, um, uh, Master warned him because he, Swami, was editing Master's Bhagavad Gita commentaries along with a, a, master, one, a secretary who was not a devotee, but she was working with Master. And when she left the room, Master said to Swamiji, be careful about the magnetism between you. And Swamiji said, Master, she's an old woman. I mean, he was 22. She was in her 60s. I, I think he wasn't too worried. But Master was very serious, and he said, this magnetism is very strong. And it's uh, basically, she's already forming an attraction and a fondness for you, uh, as if you were her son. And so the most important thing when we think, oh, it's not a big deal, or I can handle it, or no, I mean, no, I mean, I'm, I, that's, that's not anything I have to worry about, is that this energy is not rational. And it can't be outsmarted. It is fundamental. It's almost as fundamental as when, you know, uh, you're in danger and you pull away just to protect the body. That's the first chakra. The next chakra is the one we're talking about. And it's just very much a part of our nature. So I don't mean be paranoid, and I don't mean be uh, suddenly awkward, but when you think, uh, I don't have to worry, that may be the time to take a deep breath and maybe go for a walk and, and so on. Uh, another option is to, as Darmini said, when two people are alone in a room, it's nice to maybe bring a third person and that kind of breaks the energy up a little bit and so on. Because all that men, and the reason for the attraction, I've got to keep an eye on the clock here so I do not embrace eternity with this talk, the reason for the attraction between men and women is because each is seeking completion in himself or herself. And there is a natural strength, usually, that one has that the other is seeking, and vice versa. And so it's, it's actually, a, and there's an important spiritual lesson in it, too, 
But that completion ultimately has to be found inside. Even if we're married, even if we are, as she said, with our best friend, still that other person can help us to develop that balance in ourselves. This is what Master said, that each brings out the hidden strength in the other. There's the obvious strength, but then they, we seek the other person because they have perhaps a strength that in us is still hidden, even for our, from ourselves. So I would like to also broaden this talk a little bit now to magnetism in general, picking it up from where Darmini started about the horseshoe magnets. And there is a magnetic exchange between everybody, actually. This is one reason why in India the pranam or the pronam or the namaskar is such a wonderful uh, way of greeting because each person maintains their own integrity while still connecting. I mean, you could say, why bother with that? Why not just say, hello, nice to meet you, you know, and so on. But no, it's nice to actually acknowledge the existence of the other person. It feels like actual, you know, there is something being exchanged. But this is a nice way of keeping your own aura strong. And the handshake, on the other hand, uh, is this creates this exchange of magnetism. And as she said, quoting Master, the stronger magnetism always wins out. And so as devotees, we are developing our spiritual magnetism and so on. And so we don't want to be afraid to challenges to our magnetism, but we don't also want to be unaware. So when you are in a particularly difficult environment or with a particularly difficult person, then uh, there are certain things you can do to protect yourself. The first thing is before you're going into that situation, whether it's a difficult boss or a difficult client or a difficult aunt or uncle, that you sort of pray in advance for the situation. So Hari Dasji in Bangalore calls it pre-praying. It's sort of like pre-paying, but pre-praying. So you pray that Divine Mother be in this situation with me. Okay, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be in his house. He's going to offer me the coffee, and then he's going to start shouting. And so when I see the coffee, that's going to remind me of you, and then I'm going to just be okay because it's all a show or something. In other words, you know, positive visualization. I see myself surviving this. You see? Because it may be like, no, 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 I will say the perfect thing that will silence him, and that rarely happens. Somebody who has not been in the mood to be silent all these years is probably not going to suddenly be silent now. And so it's just that uh, you can also, in the prayer, it will make you stronger and also make you not feel alone. Another thing is to do Om Tat Sat. You can take your hands and clap them in front of you and in back of you, which is hard to do when sitting in a chair, and say, Om Tat Sat, or I say it with American accent. It's more like Om Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat. And in this way, feel that you're sweeping your aura with light, with protection, and with this holy vibration of Om Tat Sat, which is really, in some ways, represents the three aspects of the divine. It does represent that. And so that really, can you can feel connected to the divine. Another thing you can do is just raise the hands and say, Om, Om, sweeping your aura this way. I don't mean to do this when you're being offered the coffee. I mean, in private, beforehand, feel that you're sweeping your aura with light. You're going in strong. Another is just the double breath. <laughs> That double breath, man. <laughs> sorry, we've got some gigglers here who are trying to see if they can get me to giggle, and it's working. Um, that, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so um, this double breath that Master taught to raise the energy. Magnetism is very important, but it's also subtle. And people uh, think in the physical world that electricity and magnetism are the same force, and in fact that's true. But it's not true on levels beyond the physical. Sri Yukteswarji magnet said magnetism is the subtler force. And it might make sense to you because think about how much we use electricity and how easily we can relate to it, especially when it goes away. But uh, we can't relate to magnetism as easily. You know, you sort of have a magnet, and we sort of vaguely know that some storage, you know, hard disks or computers maybe use magnets. Who knows? It's sort of inside a box and hidden where no one can see what's happening. 
And so magnetism is subtle, but the way to raise your magnetism, as Darmini was alluding to when she said this, this is to raise your energy. Is you, if you raise your energy, just like in the physical world, it increases the magnetic field. And so do things when you're feeling a little vulnerable, when you're feeling a little, I'm not sure how I'm going to be in this situation, if I'm protected, if I'm safe, to raise your energy. Prayer, as I said, can do that, the double breath. <sighs> when you do that double breath, also tense the body, and then when you throw the breath out, relax and feel. Feel the relaxation, feel the blood flowing, feel, if you can, the energy flowing, feel your release of even unconscious tension that you were holding. Of course, meditate, do the energization exercises if you have time to really prep yourself because you want to go in strong. But as I said, we don't want to have the approach of, I'm just this gentle little flower soul and all these sharks are circling and with all their worldly magnetism and so I'm frightened. No, be strong. You have to be a warrior on the path. In fact, the only purpose of the spiritual path is to make you strong in yourself. Ultimately, we see that that self is God. It, it's, it's the every self or all self or whatever you want to call it. But still, we have to be strong and stand on our own two feet. So when these challenges come to us, they are coming to make us stronger. I use this example of a flower, this image of a flower. And uh, Yoganandaji and Swamiji both said, flowers that grow in the wild are much stronger and heartier than those that are grown in a greenhouse or a hothouse that are completely protected from wind and rain. And those grow very lush and beautiful, that's why it's done, and yet at this, they're very frail and at the simplest challenge they can just break. And so we are not here to become hothouse flowers. And we are not here, as Sister Gyanamata, Master's Most Advanced Woman Disciple said, to be spiritual cream puffs or uh, I don't know what the, uh, yeah, spiritual hot puffs, exactly. Yeah, we don't want to be, right now in Chennai, we're all feeling like hot puffs, uh, given the weather. But uh, anyway, the idea is to not be that inside. In fact, speaking of the heat, just to digress, um, Yoganandaji uh, was, there was a heat wave, I think it was in Boston, where it was exceedingly hot and everyone was just suffering and and the others were complaining and master was perspiring too and he said i'll show you something and then he just started meditating and then a moment later he said uh, i'm meditating on icebergs and the people dr lewis or whoever was with him touched his skin and it was cold to the touch where just a moment before he had been perspiring so there is a lot that's under our control and um uh, I say when it's extremely hot that uh, it calls a, an excessive demand on our need for humor. We have to find some way to lighten the thing up because otherwise it's just ridiculous. There should be a law against the temperature going above a certain degree C. Can't Modi do something or can't we apply to the CM to just, you know, put a cap on it because it's just not fair. It's not even safe. We, use, we would joke sometimes in Delhi when it was so hot, we would say that uh, it's so hot that if you take a shower too long, you run out of cold water. Because you, we, I, you must all do this, but if you, you turn the hot water off so that it's colder than the water on the roof, which is boiling, and so then, but if it's too long, then it's hot again. And so the, the thing to remember then about magnetism is to be strong, to be a warrior, not to be afraid for another reason too. When we back away from something, when we worry what's coming at me, then we are in receiving mode. That makes us even more open to the energy that's coming at us. So if somebody is sort of trying to engage you in something, don't if you can, try to concentrate on, oh no, I wish they wouldn't, and, and how do I, uh, because that just, uh, like a sponge, you absorb it. Instead, concentrate on the energy you are putting out. So when you uh, have one of these difficult relatives in the house and they say, so, how is this, and so you can say, oh, just a second, Muruka uh, Venuma, if you're in Tamil, would you like some Muruka? Because then you're giving. In fact, you're giving something to put in their mouth. 
so then they won't talk, <laughs> at least for those few seconds while they chew and swallow. So in other words, coffee, you know, think about what you can give because that puts you in protect, that gives you protection. Your simplest protection in terms of magnetism is to concentrate on what you're giving. When somebody comes to criticize you, let them go on as long as they need to, which is usually about a second and a half, maybe two seconds, and then say, oh, so, um, how's your new job? Or how's your child? Or did you have a nice trip to Singapore? And I wanted your opinion on something. This is something Swamiji said all, in all seriousness. When someone is just aggressively wanting to talk, and this can happen when we know we have a meeting and we have to say something, the problem is the other person is always saying things and they're always giving their opinion definitively and shouting us down. There is no point in starting the conversation, I'm going to start out strong and say what I had to say first, because they won't be listening. Because they'll be, eh, eh, when is it my turn? When is it my turn? I got to, and they'll just be bubbling over. And so he said, when someone wants to talk, let them talk you know, assuming it's not just completely poisonous and horrifying. He said, you might even ask them their opinion on some trivial matter, like the economy, <laughs> you know, or politics or something, but let them get it out of their system. And meanwhile, while they're doing that, you can be planning what you're going to say, or if, you, if they know the meeting is on a topic and they're saying, okay, this is why it can't work, and they're, you can be carefully planning your counter strategy, or you can be thinking of reasons, and mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. is it, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you're figuring out what you're going to say back, and they're very content to go on and on and on. And so use that time wisely. Now what about in another situation? Swamiji talked about once he got into a fender bender, a little a minor car accident with another car. And uh, this was, I think, in the 1960s. And the man came out of, the other driver came out of the car and just flew into a rage and was screaming at Swamiji. There was no, uh, peri I mean, he first said, Swamiji said, are you okay? And I am so sorry. And I don't even think it was clear who hit whom or whatever. But the man was just raging. And Swamiji felt that temptation that, oh my gosh, he's screaming. He's very threatening in his demeanor. But let me not tense up. And so he just concentrated on um, uh, uh, just consciously relaxing, that the more the man would shout, the more he would just listen to him. He let him talk, but he took deep breaths. He didn't say, wait, no, yeah. he just let it, let the man, let it out of his system, but he very forcefully put his mind on relaxation and not letting himself tense up. And at the end of it, he said to the man, well, I'm so sorry and I'm glad no one was injured. And uh, if you'd like, you know, I can give you my insurance information. And the man said, oh, forget about it, doesn't matter. <laughs> and just drove off. You know, he had nothing to fight against and he had let it out his fear or whatever it was and then said, okay, it's over. But if Swamiji had shouted back, who knows how the story might have ended. And so keep this in mind also in life. Swamiji gave us this principle for strengthening our magnetism because we don't want to be too tense. When we're tense, it can feel like energy, but it's a thin kind of energy, and it's not resilient, it's not strong. Strong energy is calm and relaxed because we're not wasting energy in tension. That energy is instead with us and ready to spring into action when we need it. When we're completely tense, then we have nothing left. And so he said, when you feel yourself tensing up in a situation, he said, I observed it when watching uh, move the movies of Alfred Hitchcock, of all things. He brought it up, trying to connect it to people. Uh, he would direct very suspenseful and scary films. He said, I could feel the music, the angles, the surprises, all trying to build up tension in me as an audience member, and I refused. I consciously made a point of relaxing, feeling that tension or that temptation and undoing it right then in that moment. He said, and then when the big climax came and the whole theater went, ah! he said, I was just completely relaxed. Not by saying, it is all Maya. 
you know, or it is not real. Or not just, just by making an effort to relax the physical tension, to relax the tension in the heart. So when you find yourself, especially when it's hot, getting more and more tense, I say this from personal experience today, <laughs> while being out in the heat, that uh, just make an effort to undo that tension step by step as it comes up whenever you catch it and you'll find things will go much better okay and we'll make better decisions too so do we want to say anything before closing okay well thank you all for joining us <laughs>